story. Her life as a child was full of love and wonder. She spent her days playing happily in the creeks with her best friend during the warmer months, and often the two families would confide together. All was simple and well as a child. Her father, while stern, was loving. He was often away to towns and cities to carry on business. He often spoke of a family during his travels with which he felt defined. Often the family would let him lodge with them and would treat him as a brother. They had a fine home with considerable land. She loved to hear the tales he would tell her about the lady of the house, for she had no mother. When she came to be of a certain age, her father sat her down to tell her what he thought would be joyous news. He had promised the family of his stories that she would marry their son. Instantly, she felt her heart become fractured, cadent tears upon her face. Her father became angry at her ungratefulness, gnarling at her to stop her blubbering. She dried her eyes, and insisting, she was wed within the month. The day, the day for her was imminent, immoment, and gray. She floated through the day as though she was outside of herself, not a part of the festivities, but an observer. Over the next year, her husband did not pay much attention to her. He went to her once a month, but when, when she bore him a son, by the end of that year, he ceased his visits altogether. She knew he spent time in the company of other women and was thankful for she did not enjoy his visits, nor did she like his touch, his smell, or even his voice. He was handsome for sure, but he repulsed her still. One evening he told her they were to host a ball, and she would do well to make it grand, for he wished to show the people his new heir. She was not to forget that everyone around was to attend, regardless of station or wealth, for his heir was to be known all around. She planned and she prepared. She sent personal invitations to those of equal or greater importance and had announcements made for those who were common. The day of the ball arrives and guests filter in. The people merrily dance and converse. Her husband presents her son. She, feel, presents her son. she feels in, advised as if she herself is a moment. Her husband prances around with his mistress on his arm as though she is his wife and gave him such a beautiful son, the gem of his household. As, as guests look toward her, she gives smile so as not to let on of her pain, to seem as though she is not bothered. Then she looks up and her eyes become fixed on the beauty who enters the room. She is breathless and her heart races. Her palms become sweaty. She has never beheld such beauty in her life. She is immediately smitten, lips so ruby as they invite a gentle warm kiss, skin of such ivory it longs to be caressed. Hair so pitch and shining, she needly wants to run her fingers through it. At last, she glances in her direction, and the most gentle of smiles crosses her face. The lady glides over to her and kisses her hand with warm, soft lips sending waves of impulse through her wanting body. The lady ever so elegantly speaks of congratulations to her for her accomplishment of a son. The lady asks to speak with her in private. They set off for her private chambers. Upon the door closing, an affair ensues. Passion as she has never felt before envelops. Before she knows it, they are gownless and in bed. In all her ecstasy, they never hear her husband enter the chamber. And in all his mistempered anger, he slays them as they are, repeatedly in stabs, until life has left them completely. As he looks upon his wife, she lay with her new lover, drenched in rubious blood, fracted, and truly smiling. Ooh.